my talk is on the PCR. As you know, the PCR is the most, the, one of the most dreaded complication everybody faces in life. I don't think who has done surgery without uh, causing a PCR. So, okay. yeah. uh, first of all, I must thank uh, the IOS midterm conference, uh, auspicious bearers, the LOC for organizing such a beautiful conference and giving us an opportunity to hold an ISMICS session. Uh, as I told you, the poster capsule is one of the most undesirable intraoperative complications everybody faces in his life. And it is more common in new with the newcomers, whether it's the ECC, whether it's the SICS or FACO, whatever the surgery, everybody faces a PCR. And once the PCR is occurred, how to manage that? That is very important. But before, uh, I think, uh, selecting a case for the cataract surgery, you must take into consideration that these are all these factors, whether the patient hypertension, diabetic, the high myopia, then any blunt trauma received in the past, because you expect something. Mostly old age people, it's very common because they're associated with uh, so many complicated factors with that, postipolar and modern cataracts and pseudo syndrome, which is very common in our CAM patients. So in these patients, uh, we expect uh, some complications and one of the most undesirable complications in the PCR. So these are the four things almost associated in the many of the cases because our cases are very old patients, senile patients, mostly they belong to the rural area and all these things are associated with one case. And post-capsule, I mean, uh, post-polar cataract is also seen in younger population. So these are the two most important factors we come across in our uh, preoperative wellness of the patient. So other operative factors in a poorly dilated pupil, poor visualization due to some coronal opacity, then inadequate hypotony is maintained, uh, not maintained during before surgery. And while doing a capsulotomy, if there's any radial extension, then forceful hydrodissection, inadequate capsulotomy, blind cortical clone, all these operative factors are responsible for the development of a posterior capsule rupture related to vitreous loss. So these are the three most important factors we see in our day-to-day -day factors. I don't want to. So how to recognize that with the PCTR? You, as you go on doing the surgery, suddenly there will be deepening of the entry chamber. And nucleus does not rotate, whether it's a FACO or SICS, whatever you want to do, but at that time you'll see that the nucleus is not rotating. And vitreous may be present in the entry chamber, maybe through one corner. We have to take care. And if it's a central posterior capsular tear, it appears in an oval round area, where the peripheral tear appears as a, an oval area with a complex convex edge toward the center. So once you have occurred, don't get panic. That's the most important because if it's a VIP and definitely you become panic, and panic creates more complications than the vitreous, I mean PCR itself. So we must uh, frequently, I mean, see that. Uh, the management depends upon the position of the tear, extent of the tear, and whether whether associated with the are lost or not, and the stage of SHS during which it has occurred. So if the PCR happens, again I say that don't panic. Try to maintain entry chamber with visco. As you remove the cannula, put the visco from the side port and see that your vitreous set is already ready with you and keep your venous seizure also ready in case the, the machine doesn't start. So assess the extent of the PCR, either it's small or big, and whether the vitreous disturbance, if there is loss or not. Depending on these two factors, your management depends. The no vitreous loss, only the PCR, if it's a small PCR, still you can proceed. So stop irrigation and take out what the cortical matter left behind and assess the case again. If the tear is central, inject viscoelastics, even also sometimes you can give under air also, PCR is placed, and the tear is peripheral, see that again with the under visco and try to rotate the PCR, I mean, I will in such a way that it does not extend the tear. These are some of the methods. So if the no vitreous loss pit, still there's a big PCR and the pay caps is not sufficient enough to support an IOL. So remove as much of the cortical matter as possible. Don't leave cortical matter. They may induce more reaction with vitreous in the entry chamber. And again, after injecting the visco, you see whether, whether you can, with the IOL can be placed in the remnant of cortical cortex, whatever left behind. And if the you are very sure that you can place the with, uh, IOL without any disturbance, so you can place it. Otherwise, you can consider two other things, or the AC IOL or scleral fixation IOL. I, if I say that if you placed if AC IOL in the better way, I think still you can manage the cataract because many times I've seen the long, even after a gap of 30, 40 years, you've seen that AC IOL is well placed in the entry chamber because we are placed in the properly. If not, you have got alternative scleral fixed IOLs, even iris fixed IOLs also. But if there's a vitreous loss, 
this is very difficult again if the small pcr bitters let try to remove uh, as much bitters possible from the chamber clean the people at area and sti still if you feel that iol can be placed you can place the iol and continue the surgery but if the large pcr bitters should be performed first clean the again anti chamber full of bitters if there is still doubt i think would inject uh, hydrocortisone see that bitters is clear from the anti chamber and people at area also if the enteric capsule is sufficient enough place a pcil if the not sufficient you can again consider these two other methods suppose acil telepix trial referring to vitreous surgeon yes drop nucleus never do fissing that's very important thing many times in youngsters they feel that yes i can remove the um, nucleus which is dropping they put a bit i mean uh, bacteria into the posterior chamber and bacteria into the vitreous and try to remove it and they cause more disaster even if the Uh, succeed to remove the nuclear, but ultimately they may lead to the retinal detachment in later stage. So preferably keep epicic, which helps to prepare the PPB, and after implantation send them for the peripheral retinal evaluation also. So it is uh, these are the algorithm we follow in case of any care. Sorry, I want to show a bit. So remove what are the nucleus pieces left behind. Then try to remove. Don't hydrate the vitreous. If you hydrate more, more the vitreous will come forward, and it's a, this only with a swab and a manual banana scissor we remove all the vitreous. Because many times the vitreous instrument is not available, vitreous tubes are not available. Sometimes uh, it is not working. In those cases, probably you can go with the banana scissor. Remove all the vitreous. on the people in the area and the entire chamber see that no vitreous left behind to cause a reaction later or secondary glaucoma then place the iol carefully without disturbing and uh, we have seen in many cases the iol remain in place quite satisfactory okay. okay. so one more slide please so i will finish it so prevention is better than cure so preoperative evaluation is very important to have uh, possible risk factors and adequate echinacea and message to be done to mention the soft tribal e petal necessary you can give it manual uh, i mean mantle should be given intravenously before surgery adequate visualization is very important your microscope must be ready according to your uh, ipd and care should be exercised during the entry capsulotomy not to extend the capsulotomy out so keep cool everybody its hand vitreous is lost so don't worry if you are a youngster if you are a beginner don't worry that the vitreous has come you are disturbed no and assess the pcr and properly manage thank you very much for the patient hearing and i thank again ismcs and th i think many of your people sitting here are members of ismcs but i request all of you to become ismcs